Welcome to my kitchen. Join the conversation today as we are talking about lessons of the cards. The things that you can learn about the people you live with from a simple deck of cards. This is the fourth of a five part series. I hope you've been with me all this time, but even if you've not been with me, you will learn something valuable today about the people you live with. The people that you find different than you are and understand them. Today's I think one of the most important lessons we're going to be having because we're going to start the adventure of learning to speak a different language. Now I've shared with you the four basic temperaments that you find in a deck of cards. We've got our hearts that are always happy, easy going, comfortable, easy to go with, love the people, slightly more introverted, need some time for themselves, need some time to be alone, and yet are always caring. We've talked about our spades, those people that are always out there, ready to go, full of energy, do it my way now is their motto in life. They get a lot done, they're quite powerful. We've talked about the spades, those deep thinking people, those analyzers, people who are creative uh, in the way of artistic creativity that are thoughtful and very careful about themselves. We've also talked about the diamonds, those people who talk all the time, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed as some would call them, even prone to being a little unfocused and airheady, but we don't like that word so much. People who can talk on any subject at any time with or without information. We've talked about these four people. Many of you have been online to take our test, our sorting tool, and I'll tell you again at the end of the show how to do that for those of you who have not been able to do that. But today I want to move forward and go to the lessons of the cards, the game strategy. You've identified certain people who live with you or work with you. We talked about the fact that there's strengths we bring and then there's some areas that we can work on. We look good on certain days, we use some things really well, and there's some strategies we use that aren't as effective, even on a great day. And then when the chips are down and the day isn't as good, it's a difficult day for us, we use some other strengths that we pull out of our bag, and then we use some strategies that might not work so well. We've also talked about identifying people by the way they look and they behave, so you have a clue about who others might be. I know that wasn't as scientific as I wish it could be, but trying to get a feeling for who others are is really important. Recognizing the diamond by her clothing style, by her fun, by her stories. Recognizing the powerful person by their business attire, by their direct approach, by their powerful words. Recognizing the spade by their perfection in their dress, their detailed organization, their lists with lists of lists and recognizing their hearts. By the casual, comfortable environment they have, the more casual attire, the softer their clothes. So we want to help you recognize those, but today we want to move forward and help you start understanding the game strategy. If you're working with people in this area, if you have colleagues, if this is your family, how do we use the people there to have a better structure, to have what we need? How do we work together? We're not going to change people. We don't want to change people. Together we make great strengths. If we were all diamonds, we'd have so much fun we'd never even eat. If we were all clubs, well, we'd probably be all in a fight because we'd all want to be doing the same thing and we'd all want to be powerful. If we were all spades, we would all be deeply analytical and maybe couldn't make a decision. And if we were all hearts, well, we'd just be so comfortable, we may never get anything done. So we need all of us. So in working with this, we need a game strategy. We need to understand what the other people are bringing to our work game and our home game. So I want to spend a little time with that today and helping you understand that. So I'm going to start out with our diamonds, and we're going to learn to speak the language of Diamondsville. When I enter Diamondsville, if I'm coming from Spadesville or Hartsville or Clubsville, I have to speak differently. I have to speak words of energy. I have to speak words of fun, 
Remember, these are highly active people. They're very busy. Their minds are very creative. They're thinking of new ideas all the time. So I might need to pick up my pace, speak a little faster, listen to the stories a little more, be more engaged in the present. So one thing I do know about diamonds is that they're very good at getting people on board. They can win others over. They can get great ideas going. They are minute people. They can bring in people. So you need to value those social skills that they have. In the workplace, they're going to get people on board. At home, they're going to keep people and the family energized and excited. They're going to be coming up with some really great ideas. They're very good at that. Now, one thing we know about the diamonds is their motto in life is, if it's worth doing, it needs to be fun. Another thing we know about these people is that they really need, I mean, this is a deep need. I'm gonna write the word up here, need. If you're at home, write this down somewhere if you have these people in your life. They need recognition and they need approval. For a diamond, this is as vital as life itself. They need, life has to be fun, they need recognition, and they need approval. Now, on a day that's not so good, they can get too easily distracted and they can get forgetful. So I want you to know that, recognize that in them. If it's a pressurized situation, lots of effort is there, there's a lot of pressure to perform, you might want to know that if you have a diamond in your home, they may get distracted and forgetful. So you're not going to assign them the most vital thing. We also know some things in Diamondsville. There's things that really bug them. All of us have things that bug us, don't you? You got some things that bug you. Well, in Diamondsville, this person is bugged by boredom. Or they're bugged by the fear of being stuck in a rut. Isn't that interesting? They are bugged by boredom. They're be bugged by being stuck in a rut. They are worried about that. Now, how, can you imagine if you hired a sparkly fun diamond and you chose to put that person in the position of a data processor, that all they're supposed to do is put data into your computer they don't get to make any decisions. They're suddenly bored. They feel stuck in a rut. How long do you think it is that they're going to do a really great job for you? It's really important to find out what bothers us, what's important to us. Because by knowing these things, we can adjust ourselves in using people for the best strength they bring. Now, if this person needs to convince you to do something, they're going to use Charm. Very charming people. Very charming people. They're going to be using their charm to convince you. When they get stressed, they may become too agreeable, they may become sarcastic, and they may become a bit airheady. So know that. If you have a diamond that's suddenly really sarcastic, too agreeable, they just kind of lay down and go, well, we can't fight this one. You may understand that your diamond is being highly stressed if you are a diamond. There's some things you need to work on. You need to work on patience. You don't have a lot of that. And you need to work on a little bit of practicality. I know it would be fun to do something in a grand manner at all times. That's not reality. So work on practicality. And sometimes, and especially if you're leaving Diamondsville and moving off to Clubsville or Spadesville or Hartsville, it might really be important for you to get a little more factual in your truth telling. Remember, we know it's only embellishment. We know we're only making a story better. But the people from Clubsville and Spadesville and Hartsville don't think we're telling them the truth. So get a little more factual, 
Maybe we could work a little more on getting to the point instead of having a story that has a baby to another story that has a baby to another story and then have you ever lost your train of thought so much you didn't even remember where the train started? It's a problem for people from Diamondsville. So we, as diamonds, can work on that. We know that a diamond is an expressive I'm making a messy chart, right? Is an expressive communicator. We laugh loudly, we throw our arms around, we lean forward, we're very expressive. It's a way you can tell somebody from Diamondsville. Diamonds decide by intuition. They just know the right answer. They're very intuitive, which isn't how the other groups do it. But I'll have to share this and I think it's most important. The biggest fear of a diamond is to be not needed. Not needed. That is not the fear of other cities, but it is a fear of the diamond. The diamond fear is being irrelevant, not needed, superfluous, unimportant, when you start understanding this, you understand the dynamics of moving into Diamondsville. How do you communicate with a diamond? Diamonds, another thing they always ask is who? Who's gonna be there? Who? Who, who, who needs to know this? In conflict, well, diamonds don't like conflict. There's only one group that really does like conflict and that's Clubsville. The rest of these people are really conflict averse. But the diamond is going to say, can't we just get along? We want to have fun here. We want to have approval. We don't want to get stuck in a rut. We want to charm the people. Can't we just get along? And they crave sensory stimulation. So putting this person in a corner is really bad. I remember a jo job I had in college. So excited. I am a reader. I love books. And so I thought, what better job than to get a job in the library? You already know that I'm a diamond, and I'm loud, and I'm big, and probably the library wasn't the best place for me. But I had visions of the library because how much I love books. And I figured that if I would go to the library, then, oh, it would be great. I could work at the circulation desk. That'd be amazing. And I could just stand there, and as the cute boys came through, I could smile and I could help them go, ooh, that is a great book. So glad you selected that book. That's amazing. I, and I got to do the circulation desk for a few weeks, but I think I was too noisy because you know there's people who come to the library who just want to read a newspaper in quiet. I mean, I don't quite understand why they want to read a newspaper in quiet, but apparently they understand that. And so the librarian had a problem with me. But she was a very nice librarian and, and she didn't want to Probably she was a heart. She probably didn't want to hurt my feelings. So she decided it was important to make a different decision about my work path. So she took me and another really fun girl and they put us on the fourth floor in the back corner cataloging periodicals. Really, talk about being bored and stuck in a rut. It was not much fun. However, we made it fun. We had a catalog records and we had a record player and we had some pictures so we did make it fun. But understand what your diamond brings to you. Understand that in Diamondsville we need recognition and approval. We need to decide by intuition. We need fun. We fear being not needed. Let's move on to the next group. We're going to move over to clubs. If I go to Clubsville what is the most important thing for me to know about Clubsville? Well, we know that clubs are really good at motivating people. We know they're very good at convincing people. We know that they're very good at organizing. They organize rapidly in bullet points. We know that they're very good at productivity, so we're going to use them for that. We are going to trust our clubs in Clubsville to get a job done and to get it done well. Now, under pressure, we realize that they really can come on too strong and they can become 
overly demanding. What are they, they, what are they needing? Do you remember, what are they needing? They need results. They speak the language of results. They have to have results. They are very bugged by impulsive behavior. Oops, don't think I spell it right. Impulsive behavior. They are really bugged by inefficiency. Oh, don't give this ED doc an inefficient new nurse. Don't give this surgeon a scrub tech that doesn't know what they're doing. They will have them for lunch. This group controlled by what? Charm. This group, Clubsville, controls by the threat of anger. You do not want to make this person angry, so they use that as their control mechanism. So be watching for that. When they get stressed, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to turn right into that powerful dictator, and they're going to start steamrolling over people. So this group could work on a couple things. If, if you're from Clubsville, you want to start working on um, being a little more approachable. You want to start working a little bit more on, on removing alienation from your team. And you really need to work on understanding and being nice to the dummies, to the people that just don't get it. Understand that maybe they don't get it because they're on a different wavelength and on a different place. Now, clubs are direct communicators. Direct communicators. They're going to tell you just like it is. These were expressives, these are direct. A direct communicator says what they says, they mean what they mean, and they want results. A direct communicator, however, has a flip side in that they don't understand or they don't get the other things. If you don't tell them directly, and if you come over here from Hartsville or Spadesville, you might be giving hints to the club. Trust me, a club will never get the hints. They don't get it. So, if you're going to Clubsville, you're going to need to pick up the pace, you're going to have to speak directly, you're going to have to speak the language of results, you're going to have to understand that their biggest fear, huge to know here, biggest fear of a club is loss of control. They do not want to lose control. This is so important because if you take control away from a club, you have just lost so much. Make sure you maintain their control. Make sure you give them results. Don't let the, the fear of their anger get in your way. In conflict, I've already told you, clubs are gonna say, Clubsville's gonna say, bring it on. Only people who do. In fact, they kind of like sharpening their swords on other people. And this group craves recognition. Do not take credit for their work. They will not appreciate it. In fact, they'll make sure that you pay for that. Realize that this group needs action and they need responsiveness. So when you go to Clubsville, you're gonna do that. You talk a little faster, you're not gonna to get touchy-feely, you're going to give them results, you're not gonna let them be out of control, and you know that they're going to make their decision based on what is right. They're going to do that from right. Now, let's move on to our next group. I'm going to go down here to Spadesville. If I come to Spadesville, I need to speak Spadesvillese. And I know some things about Spades. They're very good at planning and detail. They like keeping finances straight. They like researching results. And they like that the whole group understands a long-range goal. They need Need, 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 huge. Order, perfection, and space. They 
have to have quiet space in their life. It is vital they have downtime. This group of individuals do not think of things rapidly. They think of things in their own time. They're not going to give you answers really fast. So know that they need this. They are going to make decisions not based on intuition, but based on data and facts. They are data driven. So make their in, in, um, decisions based on that. When stressed, they withdraw. They do not like conflict. They are just so conflict averse that it's very difficult for them to fire anybody, to have a confrontation. They will find someone else to do that for them. They control by threat of a mood. This one was threat of an anger. This is threat of a bad mood. Nobody wants to get them in a bad mood because they stay there too long. Now, if this is your temperament, you could work on becoming a little less involved in analysis paralysis. You could become a little more understanding of the other people in the, in the group and accepting that they do things differently. These communicated expressively. This Clubsville communicated directly. And this Spadesville communicates in analytical co communication. You'll hear it in their words. They'll say things like, let the facts speak for themselves. Where did you get the data? They decide, like I said, by data and facts, and their biggest fear is looking foolish and making a mistake. This is important if you live with one of these people. Don't let them run into a thing by and, and look foolish. And they don't much like surprises. So this is not a group to throw a surprise birthday party for. They would much rather help you plan it and know what was happening. In conflict, they're the most conflict avoidant of all this. And they're gonna say, let someone else handle it. One thing they crave is knowing the unknowable. This group loves to do the research and find out what is out there for them to know. Realize that they need order and they need that understanding and perfection. Our last group we're going to go and talk to on our game strategy is to Hartsville. What do we know about the hearts? What are they great at? Well, if you're going to Hartsville, you know they love hugs. They love to watch things. They love connectedness with people. They're a little slower paced than the people in the top half, so slow down a little bit. To have a little connecting time, a little people time, a little finding the common good, listening to the story. They are so good at making everybody feel part. In a large organization, they will always ask the question, what's happening to the people? It, is, are the people taken care of? Is it fair that everybody worked here today? Have people shared the shifts all right? Always ring about that. And they're very best at helping people relax, not overreacting, not knee-jerking. Now, one thing that this group of individuals need in Hartsville is they need respect and they need trust. They crave that you respect them, you respect their decisions. You get back with them after you get made a decision. They really, really are frustrated when they put something out there and it falls into a big hole. And one thing that they really are high on is trust. If you break the trust of someone in Hartsville, I'm telling you, you probably will never earn it back again because it's just so important for them. Now, they can be a little undisciplined. They can seem a little indecisive and they can even move to the point of stubbornness. We don't want to have them do that. They are really bugged when people don't get back with them. They are really bugged when they are ignored. This one's bugged by surprises. This one's bugged when they're ignored. 
When they've come up with a great idea and, and nobody really pays attention to them and you're unresponsive or they're bugged by impatience. When you want something right now, they're kind of like, uh, no, that's not going to be happening. This group controls a little bit by procrastination. Controlled by anger, controlled by mood, and now these control by some procrastination. Where this, this one decided on intuition, and this group in Spadesville decided on the data, this group decides by rules and tradition, and you will hear them say that. What are the rules? How have we always done it? Some um, things they could really work on are things like sentimentality, indecision, lack of enthusiasm. They could move those up. They are very diplomatic communicator. These two set communications of analysis, these are very diplomatic. They don't want to hurt people. They don't want to step on other people's hearts. One of their biggest fears, not doing their duty. This group wants to do their duty. They're the people that stay overtime, work extra, work the long hours, take on too much. They ask the question, why? And in conflict, they just say, let's not hurt anybody. Let's just wait. Maybe it'll go away. They crave understanding and love. Realize that this group in Hartsville needs to have rest and quiet time. It's a very unusual word that I remember when my husband and I married. He used to say, well, I've done all of these jobs. Now I just need to rest. Remember? I speak the language of Clubsville and the language of Diamondsville. I don't even understand the word rest. What do you mean we need to rest? But hearts need to rest. This bottom half of this chart need more alone and focused time. As we've spent today talking about the strategy of the game, how do we work with these people that life have given us, I hope you've learned a little more about yourself and about the people you live with. We're all so important. We're all so uniquely created. We have been made for a purpose to fill on this earth, and I have to ask you, where are you in the deck of life? What kind of cards do you hold? What kind of cards are the people in your team? Who are they and where are they? Are they clubs, diamonds, spades, hearts? Who are they? I encourage you to go to our website, www.sls-tv.com, and take our little test and find out who you are. And so for today, I wish you a great life. I wish you freedom and good health, and I wish you to be very happy. So until I see you in my kitchen again, stay well, be happy.